what I always hear when you sigh. Never in my word land would there be ways to reveal in a face how I feel. Have you ever heard two turtle dove, Bill and Coo, when they love? That's the kind of magic music we make with our lips when we kiss. And there's a weeping old widow. He really knows how to cry. That's how I cry in my pillow. If you should tell me farewell and goodbye, lullaby of Birdland, where's below? Kiss me, sweet, and we'll go flying high in Birdland, high in the sky up above. All because we're in love. Should tell me farewell and goodbye. Lullaby of Birdland, whisper low. Kiss me sweet, and we'll go flying high in Birdland, high in the sky up above. All because we're in love. The fabulous voice of the late Rochelle Turner with the Bruce Clark Orchestra there on Melbourne's Planet label. And I'm delighted to say that in the studio with me, I have the co-founders of the Planet label, Bob King Crawford and Marcus Herman. Gentlemen, welcome. Hello. Hello there. Now, well, welcome <laughs> to our, our program. Is this our program? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, a delight I to be all gold in here, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's a delight to meet both of you. I've met Marcus before, but Bob, it's a delight to meet you, particularly because uh, I've always seen on uh, the back of albums uh, put out by Planet Bob King Crawford, and I thought, who's this king? I thought you'd be wearing a crown. I, I had to leave it in the car because it got too hot. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, just how did you get the name King? Well, in the early jazz days, because mm -hmm. um, I was the vocalist with the Alan Rhodes Jumpmen, right? Um, we uh, the musos dubbed me the King, yeah, uh, because in those days, because there was Duke Ellington and there was Earl Hines and all Count the rest, Basin, and everybody yeah, had a yeah, nickname, yeah. and that one stuck. And stuck so heavily, I'm still stuck with it. Well, there you go. It must be. It must be true. Now, gentlemen, Planet Records. Um, I remember Planet when I was a kid. Uh, they were founded what year? Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm. And so you would be producing seventy-eights. We, we we did. Uh, it was actually done to promote the band. Right. Uh, and we turned out um, four four single sides uh, out of a session of six. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they sold extremely well. Uh, Blue Moon outsold Mel Torme, which wasn't bad for Victoria. And th these were Bob's vocals at yeah. the time. Ah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And they were on the actual, there was a Planet label? And that's right, that's yeah. right. And Up Among the Stars was then the slogan. Right, uh, right. And of course, later on it became, it became the slogan of the classic. world or on a planet. That's right, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. It's amazing. Now, uh, you had the first art album cover too. That's right. And you've shown me this one. Yeah. It's amazing. Hill Hillbilly Classics, yeah. 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 That, that was mm. the first art mm. cover in the world. The first art because cover it, in the world. Because the Yanks didn't, didn't have a clue on how to market stuff, really. Right. Compared to what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, because we were out, out selling on the same title, we would outsell 10 to 1. Is that a fact? Yeah. Yeah. Because well, see, our packaging was so mm -hmm. far ahead of everyone else. Yes. Yeah. Of course, um, the market, though, would have been so much smaller, too. And yes. So to get yes. into that and, and, and sell the number you did yeah, was well, good. But, yeah. Well, some of the market were only five foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the listeners would recall that the covers at that time were usually stock covers. You know, it might have had uh, a Philips brand or whatever the brand was. Yep. And uh, EMI, whatever. But 
it, they would just drop in the titles That's and, right. and a, 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 perhaps a little pattern or something, you know. I so, can remember those, mm, and particularly mm. EMI had this sort of like a red, uh, hazy yes. pattern or something. Yes. Yeah, but uh, that artwork is, is fantastic, and, and for that particular 54, I think, from, from memory, if I read the cover correctly. 50, 50, 53, 50. actually, were recorded. Yeah, it was yeah. put out in 54. Now, it says here also the first four-colour process album cover in the world and the first litho sleeve. Litho. Litho, yeah. Now, that's a, that's a printing process, but that's all right. of yes. this is, is, is in the marketing that's uh, right. of, the, of the product. That's right. In those days, they had blocks that have, say, four blocks. Letterpress. Yeah. Letterpress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I think the one that was time for a party, I think it was, that we, was the one that we turned out. Right. Mm. And it just caused cra chaos. They, they couldn't keep it on the shelves. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, um, some of the people who recorded for Planet, uh, drop a few names. Some of the people we know. Oh, Barry O'Dowd, Jack O'Leary. Yes. Um, and Rochelle, who you just opened up with. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, Peter McLean. Uh, do you remember him? I oh, remember the mm, name. I haven't yeah. got any material by him. Yes. Uh, Vic West. Vic West. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all great names of, uh, of Melbourne yes. entertainment in the That's past. Right. Yeah. And then uh, Bill McCormack, he recorded for our Galaxy label. That's right, he mm. did. And uh, the first 45 I had of yeah. that, of Bill, was I Want You For Christmas. Oh, right. On right. one side yeah. and on the other side, I think, I forget what <laughs> it was, but I've still got that 45. <laughs> And his uh, record of fascination, that That's was a right. huge hit. It was yeah. a big Malcolm hit. Malcolm Arthur's mm. another name. Malcolm Arthur, yeah. Oh, yes. He mm. started in the Presley show at the Bowl. Right. Which we did for seven years. Right. Okay. That's interesting. When now, Bob says, which we did for seven years, Bob used to produce the free entertainment in the park shows. At the... Uh, in the gardens. In the gardens. Mm. Mm. That mm. what what time what years are we talking there? We're talking about nineteen seventy two to nineteen eighty seven. Ah, ah. Oh, well, that's we entertained nine million people in that time. It's a lot. Not at one time, though. No, no, no. no. It uh, must have been two no. concerts. <laughs> 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 I think it was two and a half. <laughs> two and a half concerts. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're the first Australian company to have regular city concerts of their artists and to have them broadcast. That's right. Three years Ed uh, used to broadcast them. Mm -hmm. And we'd hold, hold them at the Melbourne Town Hall, which would be overflowing. Right. Uh, with, with our artists they used to come through a, a giant record through the Planet label. Oh, right. And, uh, yeah, at, uh, 20 cents a time. <laughs> 20 Two shillings. Two shillings. Two shillings. Two shillings. Yeah. Two shillings. Yeah. A and we were embarrassed how much money it made. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, the uh, shows were called the uh, lunchtime rock and pop shows. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yes. And I can remember uh, Bob and I and uh, the management of 3UZ and, and staff all holding hands uh, to, uh, uh, because not because of friendship, but because we were trying to protect the artists from all the little teenagers all wanting to rush up on stage and, you know... Well, nothing's changed. Too. Yeah. Nothing's <laughs> changed. No, nothing's it's changed. It's the either. same. You yes. know? I mean, everything is cyclical. You've only got to... You, you hear uh, nowadays the kids screaming and they were doing it That's at the, right. at yeah. the stadium mm. as it was well known. But they weren't doing days. it to local artists back then. No, I guess, uh, yes. I guess not. Because so they different. ripped off their clothes to do everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's shocking. Yeah, I kept standing in the way, but I didn't have any <laughs> <laughs> Now, listen, uh, there's a recorded the first original cast album in Australia. What that's was that? Right. For amusement only, ah, which oh. uh, had Tony Lamond and all those right, people. Right, right, uh, and that was at um, the Comedy Theatre. Right, right, and uh, yeah, it, w it wasn't a big seller because no, a lot of people a were into uh, Australiana uh, being in original cast, etc. And you showed me an album before, and I'm, we have a, a, a band program, a mass bands program on this station. You showed me an album uh, of, of mass bands that you recorded yeah, the, in, what, 56? The mass bands, yeah, the mass mm. bands of the Olympic Games, mm. and um, uh, that was an incredible... Uh, scoop. Uh, scoop, yeah. Yeah, because we beat all the other companies to it. Mm. Ah. The and band like was that. 216 musicians right and uh, major uh, reg newman who was the last person to shake hands with glenn miller before he disappeared uh, over the uh, over the channel, channel. was mm -hmm. that because of, of it wasn't hands? because of the handshake was no it? no i researched oh that. I, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> and uh, he just hypnotized 
all these bands that had combined to make up the big orchestra, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we just couldn't believe the precision that he had, you know, attained with it. Yeah, the, I think mm -hmm. that's very stirring if you get a band yes. that's like that. Mm. Um, the tattoo is a classic example. I think if you if you watch the the military tattoo from Edinburgh, yes, yes. It, uh, the sound that they can achieve yeah. is is just is just phenomenal. Well, because they had each band from each each of the. Uh, commands in each of the states that's right and they rehearsed what for three weeks solid yes um every day you know, mm. so that mm. it was just spot on everything was fine we get, we've got some band music let's have a little music break right. and, and this one can you explain uh, this to our listeners we're going to hear a piece called toy trumpet no we're not Yes, we are. Yes, you were. It is Toy yeah. Trumpet. I was right in the first place. Um, and it's the RWF Central Band. How did this come about? Well, uh, we made a number of recordings with the RWF Central Band, including one that uh, actually uh, was a big hit. And would you believe that I was the uh, audio engineer and it was to be recorded live. That's not the one we were about to play, though, mm -hmm. but it was the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Oh, yes. And we beat the overseas version to uh, to get it out. But in the rec on the recording day, I was held up and couldn't get to the uh, to the Melbourne Town Hall. Now, this is really good. This yeah, is this, really good. Bob likes this <laughs> because he set the microphone up uh, uh, in the right spot and everything uh, instinctively right. and pressed all the right buttons and everything. And, uh, and we got this terrific hit record and and done by Bob without knowing what he was doing but he did it right <laughs> and I am so t technically brilliant I can even open a, a can of jam of jam. jam well yeah. see you, you obviously learned it by rote so you've been <laughs> yeah. watching him often enough and you were able to get it right so that's <laughs> terrific but getting back to this, uh, <clears throat> this particular dish so yeah. th this was uh, a little bit further down the track when we just wanted to present one with good sound and uh, a, a very good uh, variety of music on yep. it and the director squadron leader hicks yes Laurie hicks, Laurie hicks yeah who's passed on but uh he, he always got the best out of the musicians and he had really good musos well why don't we have a listen to the mm -hmm. band of the rwf and, and they're going to give us toy trumpet <laughs> Thank you. 
That was very nice. I enjoyed that. The band of the Royal Australian Air Force. And uh, who did you say you thought was on trumpet? Uh, Cliffy Reese. Right. Mm. He's no longer with us, I no, understand. Well, we, we don't know for Not sure, sure, but yeah. we haven't heard of him for yeah. a long time. That's but, a good piece, uh, though. Yes. Um, I hope he is still around. Yeah, it'd be terrific. Now, uh, looking at uh, you, the notes that I've got in front of me, you um, uh, recorded the most expensive album up to then, and an album worth a lot of money. What would that be? Well, uh, it, it was... Um, you mean cost? Yeah, yeah. I think it was about four. Was it four thousand no, pounds? No, it was no, more. It was around about twenty thousand dollars. Was it equivalent to? Yeah, it. yeah. Well, that, yeah. Whatever. Well, it, comes we had, it had ten yeah. different bands on it. Right. That's right. right. It was more. I wish I had three or four copies of it. Yeah, be nice. Be nice. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, I mean, uh, probably somewhere, but who knows? Uh, one of the things that I've got in my collection is this. EP and you said something about that. I showed you this EP of Barry O'Dowd and you said it sold like hotcakes. Oh, yes, yeah, it was incredible. One particular track, Barefoot Days, Barefoot Days. and, and Barra Boy, uh, yeah. they're both tracks really, weren't they? They were in great demand and the, uh, as soon as they were played in any of the record shops, they'd sell stacks and Stella, stacks of it. So, yeah. Now this was recorded on the 14th of June 1956 and I've featured a couple of these tracks on my program called Australian Archives which runs here on Golden Days yes. at uh, 9 o'clock every Wednesday. Now a weekly uh, feature, which is terrific, but um, we always get calls on Barry O'Dowd. Uh, Barry still with us? No, he's no, not. No, no, he died no. of cancer. Wasn't sure mm, whether he, he was. He died still in his, I think he was in <coughs> his um, 40s. Yeah, South yeah, Melbourne lad? Long well. South Melbourne yeah, or Albert Park. Albert Park. Albert Park, born yes. in 1934. Yes. Yeah. But he was a good singer. Oh, oh excellent. Great. Big talent. Mm. Yeah. Great, great impressionist. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, that album that I have got of Mr. Show Business, a tribute to Al Jolson, features Barry O'Dowd. Yes. And I'll be featuring that in uh, special on this station uh, coming up. I think that'll be popular because it's so, uh, you know, unusual to have it in, in just an audio version mm. of a tribute like that. That's right. You were telling me, actually, mm. uh, for our listeners that uh, that um, Mrs. Jolson, um, Al's wife, said it was um, the best uh, tribute or yeah. something that, yeah. Yeah, that she'd heard. The best thing done on yeah. Jolson, including yeah. the films. So that's terrific. And mm. Larry Parks, I think you said, yeah. came, yes, came yeah. in on that as well. And the Jolson airs. Ah, which right. Is, which is the fan club. Yep. Well, I, I'm, I'm particularly uh, happy to, that I've got the album and I've now got it on CD, so I'll be able to, to play that for my listeners. Now, there's always spin-off labels. What were your spin-off labels for Planet? We had 10. I yeah, think. There, there Can was, you remember them? Uh, Jazz Incorporated uh, featured people like Ronnie Lockhead, a pianist, and that was uh, essentially a jazz label. Right. Constellation. Uh, Constellation, yeah. Homes, Homestead, Star... And then there was the one galaxy. for the bands, uh, the band one, what was that called? Baton. Ba Baton. Baton. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting their choir. Uh, choir was another yes. one. Yes. Yeah. But did choirs, uh, the choir label have choirs? Yeah, uh, that's right. There yeah, the Methodist Lady there. College and all. That's right. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one, yeah. yeah. Bruce Flockhart and the... Um, and the choir, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Now, your first 78s were in 51, and I see here that the first LPs were in 1953. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, was it a 10-inch LP, the, the first they, one? They were 10-inch in those yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. Was that because that was what technology was? It, we hadn't advanced to the 12-inch at that stage? Yeah, or? but the, the, the big thing, of course, was that Marcus, don't tell him, is a genius, uh, and he w was the first one to actually condense the track so you could get more on a, uh -huh. uh, on a, any type of record. Because I noted that uh, your company was the first to produce three tracks on an EP. Yes, That's right. yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so that you get, well, on each well, side. Well, that, so that, you... that happened by accident. Did it? Yeah, because I said, we'll do these six tracks. And he said, you can't put six tracks on an EP. <laughs> and I said, well, I think it's a good idea and it'll sell like mad. He said, but you can't put six <laughs> tracks on an LP. So on an I EP, said, well, yeah. won't you go EP. away and th an EP go away and think about it? So he came up with it. So yeah. I guess you just make the tracks, squeeze them up a bit yeah, more. Uh, and, and there was a technique I invented to make it so that the pickup would track it. Too. Right, mm. right. Yeah, uh, because I still mm. play play those on mm. here and at home yes. in my Technics uh, equipment at home and there's no problem at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were offered £10,000 for the... Uh, uh, for the rights how to, to do to it. the process yeah yeah and uh, but one of the uh, points was that 
an agreement had to be signed that I wouldn't do anything further in the recording industry, and I thought that was a bit restrictive. Oh, it's Apart from which, we wanted to keep it for Australia. Yeah, that, that was the big thing. Bob said, you know, this will give us a big edge, a marketing edge, yeah. over the rest of the world. It would have done, mm. it would have done. Mm. Um, now, when, okay, so your recording company's going along, what happened that it, it ended? Can you, how did that come about? That album. Yeah, the, the, that broke us. The show business album? Yeah, we, we had a problem because um, we had an accountant who said, look, taxation's coming up, spend. Now, you don't say that to creative people. That's, right. <laughs> that's chaos. Right. So, right. so we came up with, with this idea to break the American market, and because right. the pirates killed us, yeah. Uh, we were you'd, you'd outlaid all of this money yeah, yeah. and you got no return. Right. And that it was it would have worked if, if it hadn't have been for the piracy because the publicity was going to be enormous on it based yeah. on the it would have been. feedback. Yeah. Mm. Now, you, you told me what I thought was an absolute tragic story mm. about what happened to your master tapes. Yes, well, well, that takes us to the next stage. You're right there, Alex. Because uh, mm. I, I just, you know, in any recording organization you can go back to mm. their recording ledges and then they've got their tapes or their or their um, masters or whatever yeah. you guys got nothing <laughs> no no well what happened was that uh, a firm uh, in st kilda uh, that looked like they were very financial mm -hmm. they, they wanted wanted to look like they were financial right and they had some impressive names so we won't mention them because some of them are, are you know no. leading citizens yep, yep. Uh, Where were they leading? Oh, <laughs> leading the blind, I think. <laughs> so we won't make, mention any names. No. Uh, they wanted to finance our company and, and they said that, you know, uh, with our finance and your expertise and, and the existing material and the new material that you can produce, you know, we'll, be, we'll really go places. What we didn't know was, until we'd signed up, was that they were in, in the financial difficulties. Mm -hmm. Uh, and were looking to us to get them out of it, and it, but it was too late. They they were too in too deep, and getting back to what you're alluding to about the master tapes, yeah. uh, they bulk erased all the tapes, took out all the little gaps in between of leader tape, and sold them as blank tapes, in order to get just a few, you know, paltry pounds in. I, and uh, no, that is criminal. Yeah. And all all these different master tapes, you know, would be worth a fortune today. Well, I mean, the, the, not only that, but they're part of the heritage. That's yeah. right. They're part of Melbourne's yes. heritage yeah. in music. Yes, it couldn't even get to an archive. Or and, and it's gone mm. now. So mm. what we're relying on now are scratchy recordings that are, yes. are in people's collections. And mm. if they've looked after them, that's terrific. Yes. But whether they ever see the light of day and if they do mm. well then we can do something about getting them onto CD and digitising them and, yeah. and reissuing because the music has been lost and that's one of the basic things that I thought mm -hmm. when I created the Australian Archives was there was so much around um, that through certain people mm. they've cleaned it up and has now made it available and we can we can air it again mm. and it's a tribute to you yeah. guys who were the pioneers not only you but there were other people others but too, yes. other others who were involved in that mm. um, and their their legacy um, mm. to have your legacy like that wiped out I, I would have been crying tears of blood yeah no it was a very disheartening time Mm, mm. I bet it was. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with the pair of you and meeting um, particularly Bob. I've met Marcus before. Um, you're yeah, still involved. That, that builds it up. It <laughs> would have been a letdown. <laughs> but Marcus is still very much involved in, in the recording industry. And to uh, my listeners, um, Marcus has made available some of those lovely Reese Merian CDs, which have all gone like hotcakes, and they're very much appreciated. Yeah, and yeah, and for Bob that. King Crawford's got a huge exhibition coming up on the 5th of March at Bright, Bright Space. Oh, well, we'll yep, have to look yep. for that. But Bob is a very good impressionist. Will artist. you just l let me know and we'll put something mm, over for fantastic. you. That's not a problem at all. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go out with another piece and, and this is uh, a, a man that uh, you produce called Jack O'Leary. Tell us a little bit about Jack. Jack um, was... <laughs> uh, he, he was an incredible character. In fact, we turned up to do a session at the uh, at the hall on one particular occasion, mm -hmm. uh, and one of the numbers was St. Louis Blues. Right. So uh, Bruce Clark picked out the music and said, OK, fellas, you're ready to go? And Jack said, 
but I don't know the lyrics. <gasps> <laughs> so we had to run around, write all the lyrics out, everyone trying to remember a line here and a line there before yeah. he went ahead and did it. But he became a comedian. Yeah? Uh, yeah, and he was very, very big in Sydney. You must have some marvellous stories to tell mm. on all the things that happened in, mm. in, the, in the music industry. And yeah, the there are a lot. Yeah. We're going to hear Jack O'Leary with Bruce Clark and his orchestra and the Richard Rogers Lorenz Hart song, Lover. And it says on here, original producers, Bob King Crawford for Planet Records, Melbourne 1956, Marcus Herman in charge of recording. So the <laughs> very two gentlemen, legends in front of me here. And thank you so much for being part of the program. Thanks on for Golden having Days. us here, Alex. And uh, uh, I'm not just saying this, to uh, uh, you know, just to be polite, but I think people are, are doing a show like you're doing are, are doing a tremendous service for Australian yeah. uh, music. And, and thanks for calling us leg bands in our own life. Was it leg bands? <laughs> no, I don't think it was leg bands. It was legends? No, it was legends in our own minds. Oh, <laughs> lunch boxes, <laughs> yeah. gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye for now. Bye. Lover, when I'm near you and I hear you speak my name softly in my ear, you breathe a flame. Lover, when we're dancing, keep on glancing in my eyes till love's own entrancing music dies. All of my future is in you Your every plan I design Promise you'll always continue to be mine Lover, please be tender When your tender fears depart Lover, I surrender to my heart Love, my future is in you, your every plan I design, promise you'll always continue to be mine, lover, please be tender when your tender fears depart, lover, I surrender to my heart.